Hi, my name is Carrie Waltz. I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. As you can see, I am not in my studio. I am in the North Georgia mountains enjoying the beautiful view and the birds singing, occasional car driving by down below. But yesterday when I went to the Overlook, I spotted this heart. It says, I need a home. So I took it home. I found a quilted heart. It just brightened my day. And I am going to show you today how I painted this heart right here with a limited palette. I only had four colors, a quinacridin rose, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, and burnt sienna. So join me in a step-by-step -step real time video and paint along with me. If you aren't comfortable with your drawing skills, you can just trace the heart, but I, I'm going to do it a little darker than I normally would, just so hopefully you'll see it, because the first line that I drew didn't really show up. So I'm making a smooth-edged heart right now. It's I'm not showing the little quilted edges. That's just fine. It won't matter. And um, this flower has six points on it. So what I like to do, I drew, drew a little circle where the center will be, and then expand that circle around, kind of make a a um, bagel looking thing and decide where you, you want your points. I put points here, then a point will be directly across. And then you d divide that up by two more points, making it into thirds. So that gives six points. And then just draw your, well, let's make them a little wider. Draw your petals from those points into the center. And that gives you a six pointed heart of uh, heart six pointed flower with um, out too much trouble and then you can layer the petals like uh, I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put one up underneath the other they're less overlapping this way but that's fine it doesn't have to be exact okay so I'm getting rid of any of the extra lines that I don't really need that I'm gonna paint over because watercolor is fairly transparent, if I left those lines and didn't erase them, they might still show through. So that's good enough for drawing the flower. Um, I just drew the ribbon, try to keep the same width of ribbon. And when you turn it, I just come up underneath and have it bend and continue. I'm just putting it up underneath the heart. You got it right now. I don't want to take, take too much time. So I'm going to go across and toward the bottom of the petal is another row. You could use a ruler if you wanted to. I'm just freehanding it. Now the first thing I'm going to do down here is a straight line just so that I can kind of keep that level. And then I'm going to do the zigzag to where the rickrack goes the same distance on, on either side. Well. I don't know that you can see that or not, but we're going to give it a go. I'm going to try to use a limited palette. I'm going to be teaching a class soon in Tallapoosa, Tallapoosa School of Art. It's a private retreat for five ladies. And I want them to understand that you don't have to have every color in the rainbow to paint something. And so we're going to be working with a limited palette. I have this um, empty bit to mix on. And that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a traditional watercolor brush. I have a travel water brush. This is a size four. And the point went on it like this. You have to be really careful when you put it back. But all is well. I'm going to start with uh, the pink tones. So this is Quinacridin Rose that I pulled from another set. And I want, the, I want the first layer of this to be light. So I'm adding quite a bit of water. It's a little brighter than what I have on the drawing, but I mean, on yeah, on the fabric. It's a little brighter than the fabric. And I'm just filling in where all the pink ribbon is.
trying to stay in the lines. Actually, I'm just going to paint where all the pink is. Just giving it a base coat. Probably should have gone for a bigger brush. That's okay. I'm going to cover, cover ground pretty quickly. Because watercolors are transparent, I should be able to see through to my pattern. If not, I'll have to draw a little bigger. I could have put water on this part of the paper so that it would have a soft edge, but I wanted this to be a hard edge. And I also wanted to control within a space. So I want to do it fairly quick so you have an even coat. While that's drying, I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to paint the yellow. Now, my yellow is quite a bit different from the yellow on here. It doesn't matter. It's okay if it's, if you, if I wanted to tint it more like this, I'm going to pick my, this is a lemon. Lemon is a cool yellow. It, cool yellow means it leans more toward green. If it was a warm yellow, it would lean more toward orange. So I'm going to make two puddles of yellow. I'm going to add a tiny bit of burnt sienna to one to warm it up. Tiny bit. Whoops, pick that up. Okay, so you can see now that it's a lot closer to that. So for those of you who really like to paint more what you see, you can do that. Well, I've already got it mixed, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Why not? All right, I want to cover a large amount of space. Now, before I come down here and paint where this blue line is going to be, I might not want to paint right on that so that that blue can be pure blue. So I'm going to come back and... Make that rickrack just a little bit more defined. And then erase the line of symmetry that I had there. So we'll see how this does. Okay, I already had the color mixed. So you, anytime you're covering a large amount of space, and I consider this a large amount of space, and you have a mixed color, you want to make sure... See, I'm turning the brush to aim toward... The bend of those, the rickrack. Now just let the bristles do the work. Make sure I filled it all in. Okay, that's not bad. Now watercolor is going to dry lighter than uh, what you see here. Now, I've already pulled some yellow, so I'm going to now make it green. So, what plus yellow equals green? Well, the only blue I have right now is my ultramarine. So, I rinsed off the yellow on the brush. I'm going to just put a little blue on. All right, that's, that's pretty good, but this is, a, this is a pretty good amount of space. I'm going to rinse my brush off again and just add a little more lemon to this. Let me add more water on my brush. Yeah, I want a bigger puddle because I want to come back and, and use that. Now, don't have it too, too watery. I mean, I want it thin, but I want it watery enough that it will... Um, sorry about the traffic noise. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear that in the video or not. Okay, so that's close. It's not perfect, but I'm going to make another darker pass on that later. So I'm going to load my brush. You can lay it on its side and kind of turn it. That way it's pretty well loaded. Now because I divided the space where the rickrack was, I can lay my brush, aim point aiming toward the bend. While this is wet, I'm going to go ahead and drag it. Notice I'm pointing toward the outside edge. So if I accidentally 
put my brush down, it's laying in the surface that's being painted. And sometimes you need to turn your paper so it's more comfortable. And normally my paper's mounted on something. I didn't worry about that today because I wasn't going to flood my paper. But see how quickly you can fill that area? And I will want it to dry. Oops, I just flicked some water there. I will want it to dry before I come back and put any of the other design. When I drew the original pattern, I did not put in these flowers that are in this section. So now I'm going to come back and draw them in. I'm going to put where the center is. It's not going to be an exact flower. It doesn't matter. This one has five petals. So here's a, and then here's a leaf here. Again, I'm not trying to be exact with this. I just want it to represent the heart that I found, which whoever made this, thank you so much. It really, it really did brighten my day. And if y'all can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. I'll um, try to zoom in when I edit so you can see. Now, one part about this that's all black back there, I might end up just doing that in pen. So you don't have to do it all in watercolor, but... Oh, you know what I forgot? I totally forgot I need a home. Hmm. I'm going to add that down here. Well, it's not connected. Okay, I'm going to pretend that it was connected right here. And I can cut this off if I want to. It doesn't have to. I need a home. This will all be done in pen. But I'm going to draw it out in pencil first. So this will be close. If I had forgotten about it, I could have painted it in gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. And it's held on with a little tag. And it has a little border. Anytime I do lettering, I really like to do it in pencil first so I can get the spacing right and <laughs> make sure I spell it right and I can fill this in a little bit later. All right, so now you can see that um, it's not, there's a little bit down here that's shiny, so there's a tiny bit of that that's wet, but that's okay. I did ignore the dots on this because I'm going to just come back uh, with probably my white pen and put those in or ignore them or I might put them in a different color. That's okay. Okay, so now I have a couple of options. I have this green already mixed, so I can paint. I think I wanted a tad different. I'm going to add a little bit and pick up a little bit of the blue. A little bit of blue, add that to it. I wanted a little darker. And I should not have maybe done the whole thing, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to paint the leaves. They are going to dry lighter. And I'm not worried about the dark tones right now. I'm just laying in. If you have puddles, you can hit your brush or touch your brush on a paper towel and then come back and lift it up. If I want some part of that leaf to be lighter, again, I do the same thing. It's, it's like the, it makes the brush a sponge. See how now I have a lighter part in that? I just think that's so cool. Um, I didn't put any, there's not any leaves over here. That's okay. All right, let's see what that looks like. That's kind of pink, so I'm going to wet my brush a little bit more. I want, want it a little more flowy. It's not exact same color, but I'm going to use it as the same color. So I'm going to lay all the petals in, going around that little sign. I can't even see my drawing very well because my, my bifocals are too far away from what I'm working on because I'm trying to dodge my phone. Okay, let's do that again. Dry your brush. I just, I didn't squeeze it. Then I'm just going to lift out some coming out from the center of the flower. That's not what that looks like, but that's okay. I'm just making it up. So that just gives a little definition. While I'm working on a little definition, I'm going to come back and create a little bit more uh, in the, the underneath petals probably will need to get 
some more of the paint out. That's okay. And I really can't see. Sorry. I've got to bend. I've got to bend down to see what I drew. For those of you who use bifocals, you'll know what I, I have a eye appointment at the end of this month, and I know I'm going to have. I know I'm going to have some adjustments in my prescription, but right now I just got to get closer. And while I'm getting closer there, I can do some streaks out from the center. Enough just to give it a little interest. I might come back on this one and outline it in pen. Probably should outline it in pen before I go much further so you can see the pattern. But that's okay. I think we'll be fine. I hope so. Is my hand in the way? Okay, the underneath part, you see where the ribbons tuck underneath? They cast a shadow. So when you're dealing with a limited palette and you want a shadow for your red tone, notice that's pink, but that's my red, it's a red that I have. What I like to do is take the complement. So if you're not familiar with your color wheel, opposite of red is green. So when I add a tiny bit of green to my red, that's going to give me a duller form of that color. If I add too much red, if it's if it goes too too much toward the green, it's going to look brown. But I just love using complements as shadow colors. All right, so I like that shadow color better than just adding another layer of the pink. So we're going to come back with this shadow color since it's already on my brush. And I'm going to add more to that. Go around the whole thing. That you know, to me, it adds it adds a lot more depth than just the one color. I always like to layer colors. Now, if you'll see this, it also has cast shadows. Now, the shadow here and the shadow here are different colors because a cast shadow takes on the color that it's on. So this will be a pinker shadow, that will be a bluer shadow, that will be an, a, a yellower shadow. But the joy of watercolor is it's transparent. So if you create a shadow color, I'm going to mix a shallow, shadow color with all, all of these. I want a little blue. I want a little red. Which is kind of purple now. I want to touch... Well, let's see. I'm going to go with the burnt sienna because burnt sienna does have leans toward the yellow orange, and that means I'll have all four uh, or all three of my complements in there some way. All right, so I'm going to look at that. It's kind of a purpley shadow. I don't mind that. All right, so that's going to be my shadow color. I'll come back and add some of that later. Well, let me just give it a try here. I've got it on my brush. Oh, okay. I'm all right with that. All right, I'm going to draw in the shadow color here. That's a little too, well, it is darker than what, if it's too dark, you can lift, lift it up. Put a little bit more. Let's see back later. Yeah, we'll come back to that later. That's a little, that's a little too harsh. I need to put all the other stuff in first. All right, so I'm going to do the flowers. They have a blue interior and a white exterior, so that means I leave the white of the paper. A little blue here. Just picking it up. I don't have any extra water other than the water on my brush that I rinsed out. If you want the blue to be softer, you can extend the blue a little bit with wet on your brush and the blue will go toward the water. I think I should have done that over here. It gives it a softer edge.
more a little more natural. So soft edge, you have to have wet paper. Hard edge, like this, your paper is dry. I also like to show a little of the indentions of the fabric. So I'm going to come back with the original um, color that I used on this. And make that a little darker here. Under here. Doesn't that look like a different color? really does. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pick up the same color that I had here and make it a little darker along these edges. It gives this a little dimension. Oops, I don't already have... got rid of that color. But this, this can be a little darker. That's all right. I just put a little more water in my brush. All right, while I have this color green, I'm going to load my brush. And when your brush is loaded, it's going to be able to do almost all of these in one pass. And don't worry about if it isn't even. It's, it's just a pattern. Good enough. If that's too dark compared to that, take pa uh, paint off your brush, and you can go lift some of that off. But it's... No big deal. This middle section, I can paint now because that's dry. I want a little more paint, and I want it a little darker. So I'm going to get my yellow again that I started off with. Add it back into here. I'm going to slide that over a little bit. I'm just asking for trouble getting it that close. Okay, do you remember what I did to make that warmer yellow? I added the warmer burnt sienna. Add just a little bit at a time because a little goes a long way. I want this to be darker because I want to do the little leaf-like colors. If I make it too brown, I can add more yellow, but I kind of like that color. It's pretty close to the color that I see. So this time I'm going to do a little stem. And then just tap with my brush. Some leaves. I'm not even looking at the leaves. I'm just going to make them little strokes. That's fine. And do another stem. Go in a different way. I'm just, just lay your brush down and do it this way. That's so much easier. Just do a simple little tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. They can all be different. It doesn't matter. It's just adding a pattern. Making variation in... And I'm still putting it out here because even though that has a dent in it, the pattern is still there. So I want my pattern to continue where wherever the fabric is. So try to just put in a line and go on either side. Add paint to my brush. Do a line. Notice my brush point is away from the center line. It's pointing out because that way I get the tiny point. Do another line. I, you know, I'm holding it away. Have that one come this way. See, I haven't even refilled my brush yet. Okay. Rinse out my brush. Okay, I have ultramarine blue, which is right here. That was the same blue that I did the flowers with. If you want to match your blue... You can do that if you want it a little more turquoise, then you can add 
a little bit of yellow to it. Well, that made it pretty green. All right, we want to add a little bit more blue. Now, this is going to be a different vibrancy than, than um, what you have here. If you want to match it more, you can, but it's really not necessary. But, you know, again, you can tint, shift the color. You want a cooler blue, add a little green to it. You want a warmer blue, add a little red to it. Okay, let's see. Now, I might want to practice that stroke a little bit before I go straight onto. Oh, heck, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to lay my brush down. And I'm just going to drag it, pulling gently. See? Ta da! All in one pass. I like that. Rinse my brush out. Okay, I'm going to look for what I need. Okay, what am I going to do with the background here? It's black. To create black, you need all four, I mean, all three primaries. So I have my, I have two primaries already here. I've got the, the blue and the yellow. I want black, so I'm going to go darker. I'm going to add the red to that. Okay, that's pretty intense right now. It's pretty though. I like that color. Um, now I want to make, I'm going to make, I need to take the dull, the uh, intensity out. So I'm going to add burnt sienna and more blue. That's too brown right now. So more blue. Oops. I think I just flipped a little bit on my painting. All right. So when you have all three primaries. See how dark that is? It's not a black, but it's dark enough. Oh shoot, I did. Look at that. Oh, mistakes happen. All right. All right. So now I'm going to come, I'm going to start up under here, cutting in the negative space around the flowers. I'm barely touching with the tip of my brush. I'm pointing to the part away from me and dragging it toward me. If I can't see it well enough, I shift it. I hope it's still in the screen. But one, one thing that this uh, limited palette does it creates a sense of unity in your piece because all the paint colors were made by just a few tints or heat or he, tints or when you add white, add white to it. I meant to say uh, hues. Hues are like the, the name of a color. All right, see, I went beyond that yellow line just briefly, so I don't like that. Wasn't paying close enough attention. Also, this paper is not mounted, so there's a little bounce in it, which really isn't ideal. But as I outline something, I want to immediately go in and fill it up. Whoops. Went a little too far on that leaf. The reason why I want to fill it up is I don't want that space to have uneven... Um, where you can see the outline. Okay, I can get a tiny little line with this brush. Oops. Point toward what you're doing. When I'm really trying to to stay more act, oh, I'm shaking a little bit. Sorry, concentrating. Turn it to where it's easier for you to see, where you can get to. Notice I haven't even reloaded my brush. I'm 
may not be as intense or dark as it was at the other end, but that's okay. Oops. Go ahead and turn my, my painting around. I'm leaving little bits of white on the outside of the blue. All right, the only thing I don't like about that, I just rinse my brush off. I have only water. I'll come back and kind of soften a little bit of the edge on this blue flower. I'm just dampening right where the blue is. I don't like that hard, hard fine. See those very, very hard edge. And actually, we're going to probably come back with a pen because all this is outlined, so I'm not going to worry about it. Never mind. It's not worth it. Okay, I'm going to take blue. I'm going to make a little darker green. Now, i got to be careful adding some darker green to this because I don't want to... That dark color wasn't so dark that or so wet that it would bleed much, but try not to touch it. Add more variety there. I'm going to pick straight up out of the pink and come over here and make the interior of this flower, whatever it is. I'm not even, I don't even know what kind of flower. I just made up that flower. Just make that up. Okay, I'm going to make the blue a little more intense as well on the inside. Oh, looks like pansies. All right. Smooth it out. Now I come back and I'm adding water on this part of the petal so that it'll blur out just a little bit more. So much of watercolor is layering, and sometimes I don't have the patience to layer. Now see how that, to me, is making it such a, little, a lot more interesting. A little more vibrant. So add again. I'm adding some on the inside next to the center. Get rid of the paint on the brush. Turn it around facing you to add the water to where you want it to go. It's not much water. You don't want to flood your paper. I'm going to come back and add bright yellow on the inside of those in a minute. I went to the website yesterday to report the find of this lovely heart, qu quilted heart. I think it's just a, it's so cool. I've seen, I've seen the rocks being done. You know, you find a rock and you take it home and you can re rehide it if you want to. But I mean, it was weird. Yesterday I'd just gotten a little frustrated and it just brightened my day so much. It just reminds me what, you know, what's, What's nice on this earth to do is brighten somebody's day. Don't don't always focus on your own own issues. We all have them. Okay, now I'm looking at this pink, and it's much deeper, darker pink than what I did. So, do I want to make it darker? I think I'm going to go over it with, see how it uh, leans a little toward peach? So I'm going to, I'm going to paint it again. It's all right. Okay, I'm going to do my magenta pink, a rose, what is it? Quinn rose. Rinse out my brush. I'm going to put a little yellow in it this time. Maybe now it's really orange. So let's go back, add a little more of this. There. Okay. Now, might totally screw it up. Hope it doesn't. But I just want more definition between the ribbons and the fabric. I also did not um, pay attention to the polka dots. So I'm going to 
kind of draw in my polka dots as I paint this just because that's one way you can do that and I'm not trying to make any particular uh, exact pattern of polka dots because that won't happen but you know, just create an opening for, for one and paint around it and just keep going it's kind of fun so my polka dots aren't aren't white but now it at least adds more character and it's more like my original um, fabric so I'm getting a little closer together that's all right now I'm kind of kind of getting into the hang of how to create just do a, a C and and just continue that and then a backward C and then drag the, the paint Notice I haven't reloaded my brush yet. If you don't want to do that, that's certainly fine. I'm going to probably speed this part up so you don't have to see the whole tedious process. Play. A little brighter, a little happier. Again, it fades when it dries. I'm just adding another layer of color. All right, now let's go to this other side. And make polka dots over here. The one thing I really like, if I start this is under here. And I'm going to add a little dark along where the pattern of sewing is so it kind of indicates where it's kind of creased in i like that i'm going to add a little bit more over there okay here we go and do this side notice i'm coming from so i can point toward where i need to control it I'm not in my normal space and I don't have my regular setup. So I hope you hope what I did is working. I have a new phone holder. I'm filming this on my phone. It's less frustrating to edit. But I didn't have a strong enough Wi-Fi to do a live feed, so Okay, I want it darker up underneath my flower. I can come in and just hit that again. Okay. What you want your shadow light source to be consistent so I'm going to go whoops kind of destroyed the okay, I'm just going to use that as my that was my shadow color earlier okay so I'm I'm going to pick up some of that it's, it's a, a mixture of everything now 
Notice I'm pointing toward the edge of what I'm doing. That might be a little purple, that's okay. I'm going to pick up that extra puddle and with a wet brush I'm just going to go along the outside edge of that shadow just softening the edge. All right, then I'm going to go pick up some more shadow color. Have it start right here. And I'll come back to that in just a minute. I'm going to do this in one pass. Pick up a puddle here. With the wet brush, touch the very outside edge just to soften it. If you do that too much, it's going to give you a backward bloom. But whoop. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to use some of that same shadow color. And I'm going to come up, up underneath some of these petals to try to show that this is actually a, a three-dimensional figure on my on my surface. I'm looking where the petals are showing um, shadows on what I have in front of me. Create a little bit of bend in the fabric. Add some There's some sh definite shadows in the ribbons. And along the sewing edges. Again, if it's too, too thick or too heavy, just dab some of it off. This shadow under here. That's a little too dark. So I'll just lift some of it off with my with my brush. I could just keep going on. Okay, oh, one thing I need to do. Okay, I've got some cast shadows that are, I didn't finish my cast shadows. Mainly on this side. And cast shadows are darker toward the object that's casting the shadow, and then they fade out. So... Right, I'm going to make it a little darker right up underneath here. This is already dried. So again, that's a hard edge. It's harder than I want. So I'm going to come back and soften that. It would have probably been cute if I could have done the uh, uh, the shear, the cutting, you know, the, what, are the, what kind of shears are those called? Oh, I used to sew. Pinking shears, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, shadows for the ribbon cast on the table. We've got to have that. Some of it will be here. Just move your ribbon and see what it does. Probably should have done that before I started painting that area. It 
it's a little hard. I'll come back and soften that. Okay, that made a bloom. Okay. Oh, I need the centers of the flowers. So, yellow, yellow. I want to highlight that little button. I'm going to put just a little bit of yellow on that. Instead of highlighting white, we're going to give it a little warmth from the light. I'll just add a little bit. I don't mind that. What do you think? Should I add pen in the shape of sewing? I wrote in, I found a, I need a home. I found a quilted, I couldn't fit the lettering in, quilted heart. So I put the shape of a heart and the website and the hashtag. So when I hold this up, you can see that it's still wet. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'll come back with the pen. Micron 005 is the smallest pen I have and this is tiny writing. So this is what I'm going to trace it in. Can you even see? Once I finish my lettering, I let it dry, and then I'm going to come back and erase what pencil marks I see. I'm going to hold off on all erasing until I'm through with this entire piece. I'm going to come back and add some detailing. I really like how that just really helps it pop out. So I'm going to do that with the heart, and you can follow along if you want. I, anytime I'm doing lettering, I wanted a firmer surface, so I put my sketchbook under here. I'd been working on a drying mat. So... Uh, still part of it's dry, uh, a little wet, so I'm going to go where it's dry. So you, you can always put the back of your hand on your paper. If it feels cool, it's still slightly damp. So I'm going to start with my outline. Your outline does not have to be solid. You can just kind of do sketchy marks so it doesn't have to be too exact. It's a little more um, painterly that way. You see how that's not totally a hard edge? Or you can just lift your pen up every now and then. Doesn't have to be everything. I kind of like it that way. And you don't have to be right up against it. You can leave a little gap. That's fine. Okay, is this dry yet? This part seems dry. Okay, so um, when I do the the stitching part, I'm just going to give that kind of a straight edge to start with, even though it's it's really not there. I don't know if I want to do there. Hers is. I'm assuming it's a woman who made this. I'm not sure. It's got to be easy enough for me to repeat. So I'm going to just do one direction to start with in my shadows. Try to keep it about the same distance apart. Now she used yellow thread. I do not have a yellow pen. So I'm just going to use the pen that I have. But I'm going the same direction all the way around. See, is that dry yet? This side is. So as you come to a bend, just rotate. That. That's not dry yet. So now I'm going to come back the other way.
about the same distance apart. Just making X's over the other lines that you did. Almost dry. Now, do I want to do the same thing across here? I kind of don't. I think I'm going to do it this way. As though there's a seam on either side of the piece. Some quilting has the center seam and then they sew on either edges just for stitching. So I'm going to just make that mine instead of um, going on top of. Okay. See the artist's prerogative. You can you can change things. All right, now I am going to outline the flower. I think it will pop out better and show up nicely if I have some black on it. Again, rotate your work. It's so much easier. Sorry, y'all have to see it upside down, but um, it'll turn out better this way. So I'll probably leave this video in real time. Let me know. If it's like, oh, that's too, way too long, Carrie. Or uh, if you don't mind the real time. And just follow along. You know, you can always speed it up. And hear, hear Carrie as a chipmunk. Okay. Carrie Waltz. I love this sign here. All right, and then I can cut this off and do, decide what I want to do with it. Let me know if anything today was helpful. If you enjoyed the uh, journey of the quilted heart. And if you know who made these, that would just be awesome.